We have our first guest of the day, and I know a lot of people don't know who this is, but I, I was very interested, and in when I got a shout-out from Ricky saying that we're going to have this guy on the show, Ricky and Jillian, shout-out to our social media guys that really get us kicking and really what we do best on our interviews. Uh, this guy, they really wanted me to interview this guy, and I was very intrigued when I read a little bit about this guy. We are now talking to FDU Knights head coach Rob D. Toma. So what's going on, Rob? How are you? Hey, happy Memorial Day. Thanks for having me on, guys. Absolutely. It's been an uh, interesting, interesting day, especially, really, I know a lot of people are having these uh, barbecues and uh, the social distancing. They have their DJs on these floats or whatever the heck they have mm-hmm. here on Long Island. It's, it gets a little annoying when you can't really hang out with you and your, you know, your own family. Yeah, it's tough. It's different, but, you know, it is what it is, so we got to try and make the best of it. Positive. As you know, there's no sports going on, and I'm sure you had the opportunity opportunity to watch the uh, the uh, the last, the last dance, dance. <laughs> with the Chicago Bulls. Did you watch that? Oh, absolutely! Like clockwork every Sunday night, two hours. Uh, it reminded me like the old days of when the Sopranos were on. You, you knew the whole world was watching together on Sunday night. It was, and I grew up a. Uh, Michael Jordan fan, even though I grew up in New York. So uh, it was awesome to relive some of those days and learn some new things I didn't know from when I was a little younger. So you love the fact that Michael Jordan practically shot down the New York Knicks and the Patrick Ewan era? Every year. Loved it. I was hated <laughs> by most of my friends. But, you know, I think you're around the same age. So you grew up with all that. Uh, both Knicks, every, everything was a war, you know? <laughs> it was, they were just classic basketball games, but it was fun, man. I remember days being, like, those Sundays in May would be like an NFL Sunday is now with how many people seemed like they were watching it. Were you a Knicks fan or a Chicago Bulls fan? Bulls, yeah. Bulls. Really? Really? So he loved this. <laughs> a rare breed. Oh, man. <laughs> Bulls Come fan on. in New York. Rob, what's going on, man? I, I mean, you live in New York and you're rooting on Michael Jordan, the enemy? Come on, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess it's the... Uh, Everyone, you know, they would say front runner and this and that, but it was really hard not to be a kid and be uh, into Michael Jordan, I'd say, on that age, you know. As you guys know, we are talking to FDU Knights head coach Rob D- D- Tomola. So, um, D Tomola. Tomola. I got it. I got it. You don't need to correct me. I got it. D Tomola. D Toma. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Rob, tell us a little bit about your career right now in FDU and, and what FDU moving forward, what, what is the team, uh, where do you see this team going in the near future with, with your recruiting and the scouting over there at your school? Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, last June, is, or officially last July is when I got hired as the new head coach at Fairley Dickinson. And, uh, it was an interesting time, you know, there was a lot of players in the transfer portal, which I'm sure you're hearing more and more about now. So when I took over, the roster was obviously depleted. A lot of people were leaving. So it was definitely what you'd call a, a rebuilding situation. Um, and then we, you know, we hit the ground running. I hired a pretty exciting staff. I'm, I'm really happy with Steve Atkins and Ethan Newton, my assistants. And we hit the ground running recruiting and, all those guys that we recruited from last year to this year will be here in the upcoming fall, um, which we're really excited about. It's a, it's a large class, uh, future is bright. But I was actually pleasantly surprised with, you know, everyone's telling you rebuilding is going to take some time. I was really surprised. I wouldn't say surprised, but the work ethic and the talent that was already in place here, uh, it was. It, it made me think we had a, a chance this season, and unfortunately. Uh, the season getting cut short after 13 games, uh, you yeah, know, we didn't really get to get out the way it was going. We missed out on a lot of development of these guys. But, but the future is bright. We're really excited about what we're trying to build here. I think uh, we're on the right path. One of those players that stood out in those 13 games was Tom Rushidi, who was a third baseman and outfielder. He had 364, five home runs, 11 RBIs. What stood out t- about him most to you? Tom, Tom is absolutely... Uh, I'd say the word that comes to mind when you look at Tom is just his professional. His professionalism. He's only a sophomore in college this year, but he, he separates himself from other college athletes in the sense he, he carries himself like other players I have coached that have gone on to be drafted and play pro ball. It just 
it's a business, you know, they show up, they get their job done, but they're also a team guy. And he's a power, he's, he's definitely an outfielder. We put him at third base a little this year at necessity and shows you what kind of team guy he is. So he had to play there pretty much since he was a little, did a little league, but he was willing to do whatever was best for the team. But he's a power hitting lefty. I mean, opening day, he hit three home runs on opening day, which was <laughs> exciting. And as a first First year head coach that made day one a lot easier when you see those three balls thrown over the fence. But uh, all in all, he's an offense top five, top six in a lot of offensive analytical categories this year. We are really excited about Tom. Do you preach defense or do you preach offense? I know the league has changed. Major leagues, the MLB has changed for baseball. A lot of people want to see power. They want to see home runs. I know college, and I watch the College World Series. I, I don't really watch the college season because a lot of people don't until the College World Series comes right. around and they watch the tournament. What do you preach? Do you preach? Do you preach pitching? Do you, are you looking, when you're recruiting, are you looking for some top pitchers? Are you trying to look for great defensive players in the field that have a great offensive ability? Well, absolutely. I mean, the old adage in baseball, pitching and defense with games, and it's absolutely true. It's just... Uh, on the recruiting circuit, the top-notch pitching, obviously, is at a premium. It's going to go to probably your bigger power conferences. So pitching um, is a bit of a development at our mid-major type level of Division One. So absolutely, if I had my pick, we'd have power arms and we'd roll right through and <laughs> easier to hold the team down. So <laughs> we're never going to not build through that. We're always going to be on the lookout for that. But I kind of, as a... Long time assistant, I, I guess you could say I made a name for myself being, uh, obviously I was on the offensive side of things. I was a MPO hitting coach, but when I started to get a little recognition was as a base running guy. We led the country when I was the assistant at Fordham back to back years. We led all of Division One and stolen bases. Uh, so it's something we try and do. We try and get athletic. We try and run and create a little havoc on offense. You can combine that with the pitching, uh, which was a nice formula at Fordham University where we won when I was the assistant. Uh, I think those two things combine. When you got pitching and you can steal some runs here and there, it's a good combo. When you were at Fordham, there were two guys that just got drafted into major leagues, one of which we just had on air a couple of weeks ago in Kyle Martin. Uh, those guys drafted into baseball, what did you like most about their style of play and as people when you were coaching there? Uh, Kyle is an unbelievable talent in the sense of uh, just raw athleticism in the arm. I mean, he was he threw from an awkward kind of three quarter ish low side quarter uh, sidearm angle, and the best part of Kyle was this mentality he had that he was just a lot of the ball. He was our back end guy, you know, closer I guess in more typical terms of baseball, but a little different in college because sometimes you bring that guy in in the sixth and you let him ride, but. For the main night, he was that guy who could just get you that three to six outs whenever you needed it to hang on to a lead and you felt comfortable with it. I mean, in the Atlantic 10 championship game, he came in in the seventh inning. We were trying to get the last nine outs, and we're one out away from the championship, and we still make fun of him. He gave up a home run to tie the game, and then he pitched all the way till the 12th. We were able to, <laughs> to win it in the 12th, which is obviously not a typical year closer, but you don't know, hold anything back on the championship. But that's, it, it speaks to what Kyle was. He was like most of the guys that have been fortunate enough to get drafted and climb, it's the number, like I said about Tom, it's just the professionalism that you ask them to do something and you never have to worry if they're going to do it. You didn't even have to be there. They have such a plan, a regimented work ethic that they're able to attack each day, whether a coach is there or not. And a lot of times you're just going to need to say you're alone for the ride. You, get to, you give them advice and pointers, but it's unbelievable what those kids were able to accomplish, especially Kyle. We are talking to FDU Knights head coach Rob DeToma. There you go. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tell him what he want, Bob. Absolutely nothing. One of our fans is actually on our feed, and he wants me to let you know that down in Florida, graduating right now, uh, they have two solid lefties right now, sophomores, that are going to be graduating next year. I'm sorry, next year. So if you want to go scouting, I could get you all that information. He says they're... Good lefties right now in their school, so. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, all the help we can get nationally, East Coast, West Coast, anybody who wants, you know, we're always out there looking. Oh, so you guys know, if it, he'll give you all his information after this interview. If you want to reach out to Rob, Rob would absolutely love to hear about these pitchers. But 
Um, as a, as a baseball player of my own, and I, I was a baseball player growing up as a center fielder, I, uh, what I learned as a leadoff hitter was bunt the ball, try to get on base and use your legs to steal, you know, steal bases and, and try to get into scoring position. So you give the person in the batter's box an opportunity to get an RBI. Now, do you preach that or... Do you preach a different style of ball, uh, you know, especially with the league has transitioning with power, like I was saying? Do you preach that, or do you preach the American League ball with power? I would have definitely recruited you. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I think it's a little bit of my background because I was the same thing. I mean, I, I played second base, and I let off on, I think, 90% of the games I ever played in my life. Um, and I was always that kind of player. I wouldn't say we're like stressing the fact that you have to bunt and you have to run. I think what we're trying to stress is uh, let's take advantage of whatever the other team gives us. So if that third, as you probably were aware, is from the type of player you're sounding like, if the third baseman was a little behind that bag, you want, I want the type of guy that'll take advantage of that and try and drop the bunt down. But I say if, if you can steal second after hitting a single, to me, that's the same as hitting a double. So however we get there is however we get there. But uh, that's the kind of, the, in my opinion, the seed and that type of player who's always looking to take advantage of whatever is there for him. That travels. That doesn't really slump. Uh, power hitting, and, yeah, it's great. If everyone hit it over the fence with doubles, triples, it makes the coach's life a lot easier. But as we've all seen, uh, especially as the games get bigger and the pitching gets better, that kind of hits the wall, and you got to figure out a way to score runs. Uh, not too many teams at any level have just slugged their way to a championship. Especially nowadays, I feel like pitching is so far ahead of the hitting at all levels. As you can watch the major leagues. A lot of strikeouts and a lot of power arms. So, got to find that way to score. Rob, are you surprised that bunting is a dying breed now in the major leagues? Not so much just because, if you know, kind of how the economics of baseball works and with all the sabermetric stuff. I mean, it, the game we play in college is much different. Like we're, we're willing to the risk of giving up an out to create a run where in the major leagues they don't want to give up an out you know the way the game is now it's power arms power bat any guy can really hit a three run homer at any given time so sometimes it doesn't make a lot of logical sense to give up an out you know just to move a guy along when you're assuming maybe seven out of your nine guys in the lineup to hit the ball over the fence at any given time uh, but I do think it, it all it runs in cycles I do think we'll get back sooner or later to I know what the game used to be, but I do understand. You know, you, you make your money in the major leagues by putting up RBI and home runs. It's such a business now that um, you're not coaching the one run at a time kind of small ball mentality at that level. 